We're going to be calling the show Open for Business. And this is where local business owners can come on, share the fact that they are open for business still during these uh, crazy, crazy times. Uh, and today we're trying something, or I'm trying something never done before. I've actually got two guests lined up. They're sitting in the show. You're in for a treat because because I know both of them are great talkers, which is awesome. Um, looking forward to those. So we have got um, we've got Sally Roper from Hope Law first up. Incredible. Just been chatting to her earlier. She's got some great stories to tell you. Um, and then we've got um, Marla White, Marla White Photography, and she has got a scavenger hunt coming up she wants to talk about she might need a little bit more coaxing from behind the chair she's not a she's a, she was a little bit worried about live streaming but she'll be fine because as you know actually it doesn't matter it's never going to kill you live streaming if it goes wrong it goes wrong uh, we did on um saturday bless her with the lovely nikki from melosa here in beauty terrible connection um so yeah so then i <clears throat> Excuse me. So then I, I re-interviewed her afterwards. We've done the we did a Zoom recording. So I just got to edit that, and uh, I'll be sharing that onto the Nick Wood page. Um, but anyway, this show there you go. The Open for Business show. Quick sponsorship is sponsored by Get Clients with Video. I thought I'd add that in. Um, where if you go and see Get Clients with Video, that is where you'll find all things video related. And there's lots more new content coming on there because, of course, as we're locked down, we're just uh, creating content. As always, I am here at my mother-in-law's kitchen. Bless her. Those of you who've been following the show, <laughs> which is now a week old, um, know that it was her and my wife's birthday last Tuesday. She's 95. 95. That's my mother-in-law, not my wife. Um, and so we've been looking after her. So hence, hence we've got the kitchen backdrop. So, uh, so that's all good. Um, so anyway, listen, guys, tell us, you know, hopefully the comments will be working as well. Um, but and if you do comment, we can pull them up on the screen, providing they're child friendly and nothing too naughty, nothing too risque. Um, and we'd love to know that we are where where are you watching from? Uh, we are we're going into further and further reaches of of, uh, of the world. Um, again, because Facebook is two things. One, Facebook is uh, rewarding us for, for for posting live videos every day, so a bit of consistency. I think the the reach is you know we were getting um four or five hundred views on a couple of the shows last week the reach was eight nine thousand uh and also um i want to give out a massive shout to a lovely lady called jen piggott who what a charming lady she saw that the show was on loved the idea she has a network she she pinged it out on the networking for small businesses in berkshire and whoa i tell you what berkshire people you are amazing because you lots of comments lots of businesses still open wanting to share and that's actually where i found um i found uh, the lovely sally and mark and david sorry i thought sally and david and marla sorry getting marla and my words mixed up hey there you go the joys of live streaming that's what we got um so uh, i just wanted a very quick shout out obviously I'm in Farnborough in Hampshire, but I'm right on the Berkshire, Hampshire, Surrey borders. So we kind of get all three. And my local town is North Camp. So my daily shout out, the North Camp Butchers, Woods of Butchers, absolutely brilliant. They are still open. They're still delivering to the care homes around the uh, around the area. So shout out to them. And also uh, my favorite vegan store, whose name I always forget, Ah, but it's a lovely Nadia and Chris. If you know North Camp, they're just next door to the cafe. Don't make that mistake. Um, yes, yeah, a vegan store. I'm not, look, I'm not vegan, but that's where we get our beautiful fresh produce from. And they fill up your, uh, they're great. They, we can go in with our little tubs and they fill up our washing liquid and all sorts. Really cool. And they have only just started. So I will get their photo tomorrow and, um, and share them because they've, they've only been in business a few months and of course right now uh you know they need all the help they can get but people are still queuing two meters apart obviously um to get into their shop which is brilliant so there you go there was a quick a quick opening gambit and i hope you know, look let me know what you think of the new title the previously untitled live stream slash show um had no title so open for business 
let me know. If you think it's rubbish, tell me and we'll come up with another one. Uh, actually, that's a good point. If you think it's rubbish, tell me and come up with a better suggestion because <laughs> I know there are greater minds than mine out here. Um, and as a remember, look, this, is, this is just a space where we want to hold it open for business owners to come on, share that they're still open for business. If they're moving it, maybe they're transitioning from traditional offline to online. If you need any help with that, just let us know. We can all um, we can we can all um, um, help each other. So with that, actually, I would probably create a, a a new group. I might call it an open for business group, just so that we can all have a conversation in there in the one place. Let me know your thoughts on that as well. So here we go. Right then now. First up, and I have to say, when I saw their website and their little YouTube video, you cannot help but uh, but fall in love with this couple. They are so adorable, and they've taken the, the 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 lawyer space and just made it their own. If anyone ever said to you, "Oh, you want to, you know, stand out from the crowd, do something a bit different," uh, you're in for a treat because uh, because they're going to tell us. And we have Sally, and I'm going to try and bring her in really subtly um, but this is where normally it can all, all go horribly wrong so here we go with hello sally are you hello. there <laughs> hello nick good to speak to you oh fantastic there we go this ladies and gentlemen is the lovely sally roper from hope hello. law which is she uh, founded i believe with your husband yes that's right and of course you're still open for business you're working from home and, uh, Very much so. Yeah. Cool. And and also we were just chatting earlier, and Sally was telling me about something else which you really will want to watch, and that is um, they are they have been home. What's the word I'm looking for? Home schooling, I suppose. But like yeah. proper people would call it home educating. Home proper educating. Home I like home. I like homeschooling. <laughs> I think that's the best one. <laughs> so anyway, listen. Look. Okay, let's just crack on, Sally. Welcome sure. to the to the show. Thank you, thank you very much thank for joining me. And uh, thank you for inviting me. Oh no, my my pleasure. Um, and please do you know? So, Hope Law, yep. uh, you're working from home. Please, t you know, how did how did it all start? I mean, I, I guess. So, you, you, I'll let sorry, you carry on. That's right. <laughs> what were you going to say? Uh, I was going to say, I guess your husband was a lawyer, and you are you yeah. a lawyer as well. No, absolutely not. So my husband, David, is a solicitor. He qualified probably about 18 years ago and has worked in Berkshire, started working. In fact, he had his training contract after University Law School in Wokingham, um, which is how we met because I'm from Racknell and we met, um, we actually met at church. We went to the same oh. church. That's um, and at the time I was a secondary school drama teacher. And um, yeah, we got together, got married got three kids now and they're all taller than me so um yeah it's been a bit of an adventure but for years David has been a solicitor and his area of specialism is what's known as private client law so that is wills trusts probate powers of attorney all the kind of end of life care and planning um when he was doing his training contract what you you, you have to kind of go through all the different departments they said um he was too nice for litigation. So he's not really a kind of crazy, scary lawyer. He's not good at suing people. He's too kind. He's very gentle. So they I said, love that. this would be right for you. Work, do wills for, for, for little old ladies. That's kind of what they said, really. But um, So he's done that for a long time and um, would often come home pretty sad, really, about some of the clients that he'd meet, often meeting bereaved clients, um, and there was one man in particular, an elderly man who was a widower and his wife of 60 years died. And he oh. sat in David's office and cried. And he just said, I don't know where anything is in the supermarket. I can't find the OXO cubes. And um, and David came home and was pretty tearful about it. And, and we just said, if it was our firm, we could look after him. You know, I could go and pick him up, say, come on, let's go to the supermarket. I'll show yeah. you where the OXO cubes are. And I could help him out. And I've always been a bit of a baker. And um, I thought I could take him a cake. That would be really nice. But because it was someone else's firm, we couldn't do that. So I think that was probably the seed for Hope Law, really. Um, and then in the years that followed, my, my dad's an accountant. And he, oh. he's for years said, you must set up your own firm. You must set up your own firm. And so a year and a half ago, we, we did. We bit the bullet. 
we started on the 3rd of September last year, not last year, the year before, and um, waited for the phone to ring at nine o'clock, which was oh. a bit scary. Um, yes. And I, when I, I, it did ring, it rang. And I picked the phone up and I could hear this weird sort of voice go, hello, I would like a will. And it was my dad winding me up. <laughs> Get off the phone. Um, oh, but, dude. So, that, so that that's was the first day of Hope Law. So we, we started Hope Law. We, um, before we set up, we talked about hiring an office or um, maybe then build, building a little office in the back garden. And just because we actually had no money at all to start Hope Law, our only option really was to just start in the dining room. So we got a little desk and set it up in the corner of the dining room and David just got on with the work. I mean, officially he is our solicitor and I am marketing and operations, which basically means I'm the goal. Yeah. Um, and and, and I, what you do that very well. <laughs> no, thank you. Um, but we um, we made some decisions about how we wanted to do things. So we decided we would have a charity of the month every month that we would support. And in fact, our charity for this month is a charity called Ellers, Ellers.org. Ellers. And um, Ellers, E-L-L-A apostrophe S, Ellers.org. Um, and they support women who have been exploited through modern slavery. And they oh, wow. give those women somewhere to live. Um, we've also worked with another charity, Hope at Home, who do a similar thing. But each month we choose a different charity. And they tend to be charities that we are passionate about. So charities that support the orphaned, the widowed, the fatherless and the oppressed. So we are wow. passionate about um, seeing people released from exploitation and trafficking. We're passionate about seeing people released from abusive relationships. Um, we're passionate about children and young people um, and, and elderly people. So David is part of Solicitors for the Elderly and we've supported a number of charities relating to elderly people. Um, so that was the first thing we wanted to do a bit differently. We meet all of our clients, well, before this, we met all of our clients either in our home or in their home. Um, we never charge for anything like that. We, in fact, we only charge if we do work. So often people will come to see us and ask for our advice. Um, and we can sit with them because it's our firm for about three hours if we want to. Mm. And we can chat with them and we won't charge them unless we do work for them. So um, we've made that a priority. Wow. And, uh, actually, well, that... uh, sorry, what are you uh, going to say? Yeah, no, that, 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 that's, that's, that's really amazing because when you think about it, that's, you know, that ability to actually say, oh, do you know what, you know, what constitutes paid advice and unpaid advice is, yes, is yeah. great. And the fact that you can control that, I, I think, is, is, is amazing. Um, well, yeah, yeah, I mean, and for David, as a, as a solicitor working for other law firms, it was all about, you know, time recording and making sure you were earning money. And for us, our priority yeah is to see people have hope. That's why we're called Hope Law. We want to bring hope to the people we meet, whether those people are um, bereaved or with, or dying. You know, we, we do wills for people and often people come in and say, right, well, I'm going to die. I found out I'm very poorly and I need a will. And we want to give people hope that's going to be okay. In the same way, we want to give people a bit of hope in humanity, I think. There's an awful lot of make money, make money, make money. And actually what we need is someone to be kind to us and someone to be gentle with us and somebody who we can trust to give us advice because we need it, not because we can afford it. Um, oh, yeah. So we, we made that priority and um, we love it. I, I, the best feedback we ever get is, oh, I can sleep now. And that's what we want. We want people to have no anxiety, um, to, that, to know everything's going to be Yeah, I know. And I, and I think that's amazing. And it's, and it's so true, isn't it? People do can get into such a worry state and then that actually can block them and then they get into like a almost like a caught in the headlights um, oh, yeah. scenario so so to be able to ease people through and and that ethos of, of helping people i think i think hopefully well, one of the outcomes of when we when we get back to some sort of normality will be hopefully yeah. we'll have a bit of a more caring um yes. society and i think if you're so, beaten us for that i think I think that's coming. And, you know, for us, one of the things that we've always done is is look after our clients, particularly our elderly clients, and spend time with them and listen to them. And this has actually been more of an extension of that for us. So when we've gone to see clients, we now have developed our, our clients at the moment are mainly wills and lasting power of attorney clients. People obviously wow. in this current climate are very anxious and want to get their affairs in order. Um, and so what we've had to do is we've had to develop a way to witness people signing their wills and and their um, lasting power of attorney application forms 
without any contact with them. So that's yes, important. How does, quite how does that work? Process. Yeah. Well, so there, there are legal requirements in that when you witness the signing of a will, which anyone can witness someone signing a will, by the way, it doesn't have to be a solicitor that particular right. document, um, you have to see that person signing that will and then they have to see you sign as a witness. So what we've been doing is all of our consultations have been taking place either over the phone or video chat like this. Um, We've then been drafting people's going round to their house. On the way to the house, David will speak to them and go over what is in their will one final time to make sure that they do yeah. understand. Because again, that's a legal requirement to make sure they fully understand what's in their will. Um, and in that process, I should say as well that we assess mental capacity. So if we, um, for example, were to meet somebody very elderly who's just been diagnosed with dementia, um, David is fully trained and experienced in assessing people's capacity. And so that's been a bit more complicated as well. He's had to speak a little longer over the phone just to make yeah. sure that somebody knows what's happening. And then what we do is we arrive at their house and they said, yes, that's all fine on the phone. So we then pop the will through the front doorstep, through the, uh, the letterbox, yeah, sorry. Yeah. And then what they do is they then go round to a window where we can sit outside and watch them. They then sign, oh. then <laughs> back to the front doorstep, put it on the doorstep and close the door. We then take the document and go back to the window and witness it for them. We then come back home, make a copy, make sure it's nice and secure, and we either send it back to them or we send them a copy. So it is a bit of a slightly uh, more drawn out process, mm. but actually it's been really nice because it's, again, been an opportunity for us to say, right, we're on our way around now. Have you got enough bread? Do you need some eggs? Have you got any milk? Um, yeah. Which is what we're about anyway. And obviously it goes without saying that we take them some cake because I... cake is <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I'm still baking like a crazy person and taking cake to lots of clients, which is lovely to be able to do that. Um, uh, but obviously, also with the now the travel restrictions, um, we can only do that when we're going for work, so it's a bit yeah. tricky. Oh, um, but it's, uh, it's good. I got to admit, and that was one of the other things that I love. Listen, guys, if you get a chance, it's worth just going onto the to the hope. Uh, law website anyway um, i gave you the web address the, the web address is www.hopelaw.co.uk and we've got different options and there's a section which is who we are so it's sort of like forward slash who hyphen we hyphen are and there's a, a video called our story which is yeah why we do what we do and how we do it so, that's right yeah. so, uh, hopelaw.co.uk that's right yeah let's ping that up right that's be on the <laughs> um, yeah, because you want to see this video because there is some serious cake in there and it, <laughs> it does look delicious, I've got to say. That was a particularly victorious, victorious bun, actually. <laughs> I was quite proud of that one. It was a good one. It was, was a good one. But then you were telling me earlier, but, but you can't eat the cake. No. Well, I was glad you were mentioning about that vegan store because I'm going to look mm. into them because I'm actually vegan. Um, but I also, for health reasons, can't eat gluten and sugar. So I'm quite limited in what I can eat. I do have some, believe it or not, gluten-free, sugar-free and vegan recipes. Um, <laughs> but they're for me. And I'm not giving those to anybody. <laughs> they are, they <laughs> are yours. <laughs> but yes. Yeah, yeah. But it's, um, it's yeah, it's been great um, to set up Hope Law. And the last couple of weeks, I'll be honest, has been extremely busy. So we actually discovered last week we had um, an email from Solicitors for the Elderly, who David works with. and um, just passing on a message from the Ministry of Justice saying that actually David is now considered a key worker because oh. what he does is essential to the running of the country. So there are certain solicitors and they are essential if the country is going to continue. And obviously people need wills. And unfortunately, when people do die, their, their wills and their estates need to be administered. And that's something that we do. So um, it was really nice to actually have that email, to have that acknowledgement of what he does. Yeah. Um, because he is so busy. I mean, we've literally never been as busy as we are at the moment, which in, in some ways is really helpful for us. Um, but at the same time, is really very much a sign of the times because people are really frightened. People are really scared. They um, are, aren't they? And, and rightly so. Rightly yeah. so. Um, but also at the same time, for us, it's quite refreshing because we know what happens when people don't write a will and then unfortunately pass away unexpectedly. That, um, that's and the we thing. know how important it is. And so one thing I will say to anyone that's watching, if you are in a relationship but not married, it's really important you have a will if you want to ensure that your partner is um, going to be cared for that's, um, adequately and effectively. That's a good point because actually I'm, and I was chatting to a sister oh, a couple of years ago 
and uh, and they were talking about uh, and they were a divorce sister i wasn't getting divorced by the way that's a it was just just a networking event <laughs> and it just so happened that, that that was their specialty and they were saying about yeah people make the assumption that they live together they become common law man and wife yeah. but that doesn't exist at all no not at all not at all and actually there are also some things that people are unaware of to do with um you know making sure that your children are able to inherit we we often get phone calls you know how can i avoid paying inheritance tax well you can't that. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. 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 You can only yeah there i mean there are all sorts of laws to do with who pays inheritance tax for example spouse there's spousal um limits and stuff like that but actually the truth the truth is you have to but yeah very much um it is really it's a really serious matter to to make clear that if you are not married to your partner they will not automatically inherit your estate. In fact, your nearest blood relative will. Oh, um, wow. And that could be that could be your niece or your nephew or your you know second cousin or something. So, it's that sort of thing that people need to be aware of. And so for us, it's actually really nice to know that people are making sure that they're covered, that they are making sure that everything's sorted out. And actually, I have a a good friend who is an intensive care nurse, and I was um, having a chat with her over Facebook Messenger the other day and she was sort of telling me some of the things that are going on but one of the things that she said is that it's been recommended to her by her boss um that she um write a will and and again that's just scary actually but one of the mm. things that we find a lot are um single parents who are working as nurses and doctors um and in the medical profession generally and also i suppose working you know in supermarkets and things but what we're finding particularly with nurses at the moment um they want to ensure that guardians have been um, nominated for their children. And so that's another thing that you put in your will that will be taken very seriously and definitely worth looking into. So. Wow, my goodness. Yeah. Oh, God. Guys, look, we got the. I thought I, it's so lovely when you give someone a shout out, first of all, and said, I said, thanks to Jem Piggott. Oh, and there, and there she is. Him, she's, she's, she's just uh, posted, yeah, we weren't aware until we met Sally and David and her heart. And that's up on the screen. See, yeah, see. she's oh, Jem's brilliant. I can only I can only encourage you if you're struggling to know what to get for people for Easter, go to Jem's um, website, Tinkers. She's got some really cool <laughs> things for Easter that are better than chocolate and last longer. I thought you were, I thought you were going to say get, get them a Jem Pigger. <laughs> <That's, that's, laughs> Everyone I, should have a Jem Pigger. Everybody well, should. Well, Everyone look, should I, have one in their house. I have not even met her yet, and I think she's brilliant. But I think she's on the show she's later on. She's going to be on the show later on this week. So that good, good. good. I'm glad. Oh no, I I, I owe her a, a huge huge debt of gratitude. So uh, so that's cool. She's and there you go. And see, that's, this is what we love when you get a bit of interaction. Oh, Sally, thank you so sweet. You see, we're all in it together, and uh, <laughs> we really are. And I think I think this is one of the things that I'm feeling more than ever is that actually. We're suddenly way more connected than we than we ever used to be. But one of the things about being in a small business that I absolutely love is networking. We were approached by some sort of professional networking organisations, <laughs> yeah. um, and we made some decisions um, about our own integrity and what we felt comfortable with. And um, so we decided that we wouldn't do anything like that. But when we heard about this small network, we actually heard about. Um, the networking in Berkshire, the small business, I think small business in Berkshire, I never remember what the name of us is, we're just, we're the groupies though, that's yeah. what we call ourselves. Networking um, small business um, in Berkshire, I think it is. <laughs> there you go. Well, I, um, that's what I um, down. We, heard <laughs> we heard about them through a friend of ours, Marcel Bennywhere, who runs Raw for Pets, which is a home delivery raw um, dog and cat food company, and we love them, and actually a buzz, our, our dog eats Marcel's food. Um, oh. <laughs> and, um, Marcel had gone along to a networking thing and it was in a cake shop. Now, I mean, she had me at cake. I didn't even <laughs> need it. So I was just like, we're going to do that. And we went along and it's the most encouraging group of men and women. It's really, really wonderful. There's all sorts of different people that do all sorts of different things. And I think I always think that any organisation is is led by the top down. Yeah. And Gem's approach is you know fun and honest and straightforward and easygoing and we you know we don't pay to be a part of that group we literally meet up encourage each other have a really good talk um usually from oh. somebody who really knows what they're doing so whether it's um steph summers from um summers photography she was amazing talked about photography for your you know for your social media sites with people who are bloggers berkshire mummies came and did a blogging it was just brilliant and it just it's fun 
And we now meet at Robin's Nest every week, which is if people don't know what Robin's Nest is, they need to Google Robin with a Y, Robin's Nest. Oh, right. It's a cat. At the moment, Robin's doing an amazing thing. She's delivering afternoon teas to key workers and people who are um, isolating. And she's great. And we meet at her at her cafe and it's just the best. So, oh, yeah, man. if you're in Belgium, you're a small business, you must come. It's really great. Yeah. Oh, I'll tell you what. No, we need to. I'll, 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 I'll find them. And obviously, if you get a chance, let them know. And uh, we'll, we'll try and either get them on or we'll certainly give them. Oh, yeah. a big, Robin big is shout crazy out. busy, but I'm sure she'd love to chat with you. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Jen, I, I bloody love you lot, she says. <laughs> right yeah, you do, you. Jen. Right back at you, Jen. Right back at you. Oh, fantastic. Um, but actually, when we were chatting, just two things actually I wanted to touch on was just backtracking a, a bit. When you said about when you started uh, uh, just over a year, I guess, what, about a year and a half ago? Yeah, yeah, about and, eighteen months ago. Um, and you just and your dad, bless him, just rang you. I think that was so cool. Um, but did you have any? I mean, did you have any sales or marketing experience b beforehand? How did you? Did you? Did you? No, or did you? Do you have no, time that you could bring I, I think on? I'm, I'm, yeah, I, I just I'm a blagger, to be honest. Um, <laughs> I nothing wrong with that. I'm I'm sort of trained. <laughs> my background in theatre definitely helps, you know. Um, and I think also I am just someone who really loves to have a cup cup of tea and a cup of coffee and a, and, a, and a cake with somebody and chat away and I think that really as well if you're really passionate about something and you really believe in it you don't have to fake it it all just kind of spills out and That's true. Hope Law is so much more than a law firm we're doing this because we genuinely feel that we want to leave the world better than than we found it and you know when we arrived and so we this is our passion this is what we do every day we work from home thankfully david and i get on really well <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um but, you know we we're passionate about doing this and so it's not difficult for me to talk about it we found sort of that our involvement with charities in particular has just spurred us on to know what a difference we're making is yeah. really important yeah, and i would say to everybody out there you know this is an amazing unprecedented time where we can actually be extremely kind and giving to other people and if you're still working and you've still got money I mean for us I would say don't just save that money for a rainy day because this is actually the rainy day exactly. and there are people who exactly. need a little bit of help and it's um I, I think that if you just if you if you have something exciting to talk about you want to talk about it so I didn't have any marketing experience at all we didn't spend any money on marketing either we joined a load of Facebook groups oh, that's why I like kind it, of yeah. left um little yeah, little mentions here and there of what we could do. And we've built up a bit of a Facebook reputation, which has been brilliant. And um, we are just we just try and do what we do really, really well and do it because we love it as opposed to doing it to earn money. Um, yeah. Obviously, it's good that we've been able to earn money. And actually, you know, we've eaten at every mealtime and we've not gone without. <laughs> and For the first time ever, sense. we took our children on an aeroplane last summer. It was an oh, absolute miracle. But actually our priority i mean we have a bit of a dream and that dream right. is that we'd be able to buy a house by the sea that we could have fully equipped for somebody who is coming to the end of their life so that they could actually go down to this house by the sea with their loved ones and have a goodbye party have a time to sit around and talk and that was inspired by a friend of ours who died a few years ago and when she found out that she didn't have much longer she gathered all of her children and her grandchildren and they had this wonderful day together where they said everything they wanted to say and oh, they wow. um, laughed and they cried and they had photos taken as a family and that just inspired us and we thought if people all had the opportunity to say what they wanted to say let's give them that opportunity so our dream is that we will get to the point where we'll have enough money that we'll be able to do that and in the meantime we um we just try and encourage people when we meet with them to say what they want to say we, we've got a little pack that we give our clients called our finishing well pack um <laughs> and the idea is live well so you can finish well and there's a couple of letter templates in there one is a thank you letter that you can sort of fill in and send to people you want to say thank you to for being great and lovely and wonderful and a, a, an important part of your life oh, wow. and the what other is actually idea? a letter well, and the other one's a letter of amends, because the truth is that we all have arguments with people. We've all got um, friends that aren't friends anymore. And um, no one, I don't think anyone ever regrets trying to sort stuff out. 
And um, so our letter of amends has been really interesting. Lots of people looking at it just kind of going, and they look at it and they read it and I can see them nod. I can see the, the, the cogs going around <laughs> in the head. And, oh, flipping neck, I probably should say sorry to that person. But for us, we just want people to have real peace and to finish well because they've lived well. So exactly. that really is sort of what we're about. And, and you can see it doesn't take anything to, uh, you know, this is what's important to us. So it's not hard for me to talk about it. It's no, really, no, uh, no. It's not hard no. for me to talk about it, but it's not hard for me to talk about it. <laughs> No, look, as, you know, what, what a great guest to, to have on. I'll, I'll invite you back, so that's for sure. Um, because I, I love that, I mean, particularly the, the amends and, the, you know, the, the, the ability to forgive. Um, you know, when you're, it's funny, isn't it, when you're, when you're holding on to something, the only person you're hurting is actually you, because, you know, because you're, you know, you're, yeah. you're oh, yeah, totally. um, that, That's the truth of it. And, uh, but, oh, I, I tell you, what an amazing, what an amazing, oh, Jen Pickett, look, you can't, see lovely. Oh, it's Jen writing nice things. Yeah, they are the best at what they do, and some I would uh, I would suggest. And I was going to talk about your little dog, Buzzy. <laughs> what, oh yeah, so to, I, you have to, I might have to. I'm going to have to move the camera for this. Oh god, so yeah. Go if on. I can find Buzzy. That's, that's okay. It is, all... Our house is a bit like a zoo. We have um we have a couple of cats. And um, and then we've got but oh look he's there he's look I'm gonna have to turn the camera around to see if I can actually do this. But, yeah, no worries, we don't mind. We'd love to see. This it. is our buzz. <laughs> Buzzy, can you come here? He, he's pretty annoyed at the moment. He doesn't really understand what's going on and um, oh, why on earth everybody is at home and not taking him for a walk. I mean, how dare we? It's um, <laughs> it's yeah, it's yeah. not something he's particularly pleased about. But, <laughs> oh, well, but yeah, our our well. dog buzz. It's very interesting. We get lots. of around and they're not really dog people but they seem to kind of warm to him by the end but most people um seem to really like him so that's good yeah and, it, and it's lovely and you, and you said he, you know he's like a he's, he's like a counseling dog because he'll put his head on people's yeah. laps and he's, you know he's, when they not, need him. he's not one of these official therapy dogs but um he does seem to sense what's going on and obviously a lot of our clients are bereaved um many many people come pretty upset and have a sit down either in our living room, which I'm sat in now, or at our dining room table. And um, he will sort of sit right next to them and often will put his chin on their oh. feet. <laughs> oh, so. Um, so he just seems to get it, which is um, which you, is really helpful. Yeah, so. as, as you said earlier on, uh, we were chatting earlier, but yeah, he's just dogs are, are intuitive, aren't they? That's that's the thing. Um, and just but lastly, but I know because I know it will be it will chime with so oh, many you're people. Out. I'm trying to hear you. Oh. So Okay, I, I, I just want to, because I know this will chime with, with a lot of people that are working from home. You are, you are, uh, you have been homeschooling your children. You have experience in homeschooling. Well, we did, ho we did, like well, we're, that, we're now. Yeah. yeah. So we are currently, obviously, homeschooling our children like the whole world. Um, but we did actually homeschool all three of our children for about four years altogether. Um, our, we have three kids who are now 19, 16 and 13 and our eldest is on the autistic spectrum and really struggled with education all the time. Um, although he was never a school refuser, he found school a very difficult place. And when he got to year eight, so 12 years old, um, he was very poorly in terms of, sort of mental health stuff. And a number of things meant that him going to school all the time couldn't be what well, just wasn't possible um so we actually ended up taking him out of school and um, deregistering him from school and officially homeschooling him um and within sort of six months the other two children joined him because it was the most amazing thing we'd ever done we were having so much fun um the home education community at the moment is um probably freaking out about the fact they can't go <laughs> anywhere because you know whilst everyone else is going i'm gonna homeschool my kids all the homeschoolers are going I can't go out anywhere because actually home education um, full time looks very, very different to what we're experiencing at the moment. So very rarely do you have um, lessons sent to you every single day. I mean, obviously, there are kids that do that. Um, but most homeschool kids, I would say, are active outside, visiting yeah. other homeschool kids, other groups, going to museums. There's an amazing festival in um in November called the Interfilm Festival, where cinemas basically open their doors for free to home to, to school age children. And um, we just used to take our kids to the cinema pretty much every day for three weeks. So, you know, that's what homeschooling looked like for us. And 
you go on holiday whenever you like because you don't have to fit in with holidays and, and term time and stuff and, and it's great but that's um, gonna be a blessing I, yeah. it's, it's just i mean it's like you're given a key to a secret garden it's brilliant <laughs> But you do find yourself sort of going out and feeling naughty because everyone oh. else is at school and you're not. And so it's a bit, uh, whereas at the moment, everyone's inside. So homeschoolers, I think, are, are sort of, why are all the cafes shut? You know, for me, it, my sanity was right. No one's in the mood for this. This is ridiculous. We're going to Starbucks. That was kind of, Perfect. that was like, solver. But I think that um, we took our eldest through GCSEs um, and to just reassure everybody, he now has four university offers and next week he's auditioning oh, for the British Theatre School. So he oh, um, certainly didn't suffer from do it, being homeschooled. Our other two children um, actually went back to school. I mean, our eldest went to college as well. Once he'd finished his GCSEs, he went to college yeah. and he's just finishing off a, a media course at the moment. Our other two children went back to secondary school just at one point decided that's what they fancied. Um, and our daughter is part of the cohort who have had their GCSEs cancelled. So oh, she's yeah. now making that adjustment to... Well, who am I if I'm not somebody who works until my eyes bleed um, at my GCSEs? Yeah. And so she's sort of trying to kind of re, re sort of formulate her ideas. And that, in fact, now is starting to study for her A levels already. Um, and oh. our, our youngest, who's 13, is sort of being sent lessons every day. I think homeschooling is a really interesting thing. I think one of the things that's happening is that people are starting to recognize that their children simply will not learn and they simply will not do anything. <laughs> And unhappy. Yeah, so and there's suddenly a big shout out for the teachers. <laughs> oh, well, and, and, and this is where, and this is the other thing. If you think about education in the way that it works, when it, when you come to school anyway, um, because education is another interesting word, I have not got time to talk about it today. But basically, <laughs> when you send your kids to school, they spend so much time lining up outside the classroom. And this is me speaking as a former secondary school teacher. Yeah. Um, I know how this stuff works. They lie up outside the classroom. The teacher says, right, we're not going until everyone's quiet. They finally go in. Then they make noise. Right, everyone back out again. You know, and they spend hours even getting into the room. <laughs> and then the teacher then stands up front, gives them their input, all of the information they're supposed to have in order to make that lesson work and in order to learn something. Um, that goes on for ages. As a teacher, I was always trained to repeat self three times every time to make sure <laughs> people understood. Um, and then you always have, like, kids that just don't quite understand what you're saying or haven't quite grasped the concept and so what you actually have is number one a very <clears throat> short amount of learning very very small amount of learning the actual learning time period of a day is probably about an hour and a half maximum um the actual work they get done um again not very much at all um, but also one of the things I think we're worrying about is can I cover this I can't teach them maths I can't do history I'm rubbish at spelling they're going to have gaps. They're going to. Whether they are in school full time without any of this craziness we're going through at the moment or not, there are going to be gaps in their learning. That's the way it goes. That's and so life. if we can all chill out a little bit, I think the whole thing will be a lot more enjoyable. Um, snacks are survival. If I can leave you with anything today when it comes to homeschooling, snacks are survival. <laughs> <laughs> Time everything by snacks. It. And, and, by, and by snacks, do we mean cake? <laughs> very much so. Very much so. Um, kids learn a lot by doing. They learn an awful lot by doing. Get them to go and mow the lawn. Get them to sweep up in the garden. Get them to teach them how to use the washing machine, where to put the the washing liquid or powder and where to put the fabric conditioner. Teach yeah. them how to um, change a plug. Teach them about how voting works. I mean, I had a, a an amazing experience. A, about a week after we'd taken our eldest out of school, there, was a, there were local elections and um, he came with me to vote. And as we left the polling, the, the polling station, he said to me, well, aren't you going to pay? And I was like, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I vote for free. And he's like, you have to pay. Oh, and I said, lovely. no. He said, my teacher told us you have to pay. And I sort of stopped and thought about it. And I said, did your teacher say there was a cost to voting? And he said, yes. And it was the first point at which I realised that it was going to be okay homeschooling him because he hadn't understood correctly everything from school yeah. anyway. Um, oh, and so a lot of what we what we can be doing now is is saying to our kids do you get that you know thing you're learning do you really get it do you want to explain it to me because I don't get it um exactly. because actually you know their learning needs to be checked yeah. but I think it, it's you know there was 
TV is awesome. YouTube is amazing. There are oh. so many things on YouTube. If you've got primary age kids, please make them watch Horrible Histories again and again and again and again. <laughs> My daughter it, did her mock exam, Horrible Histories saved her life in her GCSE mock exam. So, you know, it's things <laughs> like this. We need to stop worrying so much about being with our kids all the time. Give them some time to learn by themselves. Let them chat on their phones to their friends. They're socializing all day long at school. Yeah. All day exactly. long. Um, and, you know, that's actually how they check their learning as well. What does that mean? I don't get it. You know, so let them talk to their friends. Don't exactly. take their phones away. They're checking them each other. Yeah. Yeah. Give them snacks. Let them watch telly. Let them be on their phones. Put music on. Open the windows. Go in the back garden. Take the dog for a walk. I mean, I love the fact that we're being told to go out and have a walk every day. I know that, that, was, that was great. That's a be, that was the best. That was the best piece of advice I was given. It's like you're allowed out once a day for exercise. I'm thinking I'm glad someone told me to because you know when you when you're sitting just video editing and doing that, you know I can sit there and all suddenly the day's gone. It's like oh bugger, I wish I'd have gone out. But now now yeah. I've got a, a set time and that's great, Sally. You have been an amazing guest. Thank you so much. Oh, I, 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 need to bring it. I do. My, my dad always says that verbal diarrhea runs in the family. <laughs> well, no, it's absolutely fine. You've been an absolute, uh, absolute joy. Um, <laughs> give, my, <laughs> give, give, my, give my love to, to David, the children, Fuzzy sure. as well. And, uh, and I'm sure we'll, we'll stay in contact as well that would be lovely looking forward to meeting you in person when this craziness is over we certainly shall lovely thank you so much sally roper and that's a uh, hope more guys take care have a great day thanks so much bye wow what an amazing lady um there you go gosh <laughs> i don't know what to say after that really um but but there you go you know what what a, what a lovely way to be a lawyer and solicitor but with that but you know being with caring right at uh, right at the very core which which is absolutely amazing and i was just thinking then of course you know they're, they're, they're dealing with people with more end of life um clients so so you know they don't have <laughs> it's gonna sound a bit mean but of course you know they don't have long-term clients um so so not to, not to worry um okay well listen we have now got for you who, who likes a scavenger hunt? Yes, we all like a scavenger hunt. Gives us something to do. Um, we all want to, to, to find out more. And uh, and it's, it's, it's so lovely. This Marla White, Marla White Photography. Um, I'm gonna bring her on. She was a little bit nervous about going live, but I think she'd be absolutely fine. No problem at all. Um, so without further ado, let me unmute you, Marla, and bring you on in a couple of seconds. Yay! Hello. How are you? I'm well, thanks. Um, touch wood. We're all, we're all doing well. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. Oh, well, thank you. Mm. Listen, first of all, thank you very much for, for waiting so patiently to, to come on. That's that okay. was, that it was, was very amazing. interesting. It was really what, good listening to Sally. Yeah. What a, what a fascinating, what a, what a fascinating uh, lady. Um, so, Marla. You're, you want to talk about your photography business or you just want to talk about this scavenger hunt? I don't mind. You can well, do both as far as I'm concerned. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm a working and based photographer. I, I normally photograph uh, children and families. I uh, do a lot of sports uh, photography because I have three very sporty children. Similar to Sally, my kids are all uh, taller than me now. They're, they're teenagers. Um, so... It's a little bit different, but I do remember having young children and having them in the house like this at the moment, I can't even imagine because you have to occupy them all the time. <laughs> yeah. And so I thought, since I'm not, I'm obviously I can't uh, be shooting anybody at the moment. So I thought, what can I do to try and help these people? Only if, if it's for five minutes a day, even just, just something to, oh. to, you know, have something for them to do for a few minutes a day. So yeah, I kind of put it, <laughs> I kind of put it to the people as well and ask them, um, you know, what can I do? What can I do for you? What can I do to help? And oh. um, a couple of people had some other suggestions as well. So I'll be doing other things as well. But this week it is the Fantastic. scavenger hunt. Yeah. So, and, and, um, and Marla, we all, we've got people already doing it, they're saying. Um, Jem. Oh, good. Marla, Yay. I'm glad to hear. I it. wanted to have some incentive. I'm glad to hear that. That's fantastic. And she loves I your wanted hair to have some well, in... <laughs> Excellent. 
So I wanted to have an incentive as well that um, like you weren't just doing it just for for nothing. So um, I got in touch with two local, really amazing businesses. Uh, One is the Oakingham Bell Pub. It's a new pub in Wokingham. And the other one is Brown Bag and they're a coffee shop and they have several locations. I think um, I think they may have started in Windsor and they've got one in Wokingham and one in Bracknell. Right. So they they both gave me um, a couple of vouchers. So the Oakingham Bell gave me a voucher for £20 and oh, wow. um, Brown Bag have offered a free coffee every day for a month, which my daughter wants to win. <laughs> <laughs> I told her she has to participate then every day. So <laughs> Exactly, exactly. So, 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 you, so, so how, do, how does, the, uh, how does the, the scavenger hunt work? Is, can you... Give us a little bit of an overview. So obviously it's got to be stuff around the house that you can do um, or or maybe outside if you if you can go kind of you have a space you can go outside. Yeah. So um, just for an example, I'll tell you what today's one is because we started today. Oh, okay. So today the kids have to or it, it can be an adult as well. It doesn't have to just be kids. <laughs> but uh, anybody who wants to and you don't have to be local to do it either. Although obviously to to use either of the vouchers, you'd want to be quite close yeah. to Woking. Um, so today, what I've got asked people to do is to go around your house and find all the letters of your name and then just take mm-hmm. photos of them and make it into a collage so you've got your name. So, um, for example, my name starts with M, so I took a photo of our Monopoly game because it's got an M. Ah, I see. Yep. So, so that was today's challenge. So it's just it'll just be things like that, just uh, simple little things that aren't <laughs> too long so they won't lose interest, but a bit of fun. Oh, brilliant! And is that so? So would that be? I see. This is this is in a previous life. I, I, I was an accounting background, and and so this is this is where my little dodgy analytical brain, questioning brain, comes in and says, "So is that first name, surname, middle name, combo of all?" <laughs> whatever you want, whatever you like. Obviously, some kids. I mean, I've I've got two children that sadly for them have very long names: Christopher and Elizabeth. <laughs> <laughs> So I guess, yeah, it's up to you. If you have a, a very short name, if you go by Abby or something like that, uh, Tom, or, you know, then you you may want to do your first and your last name. Yeah. Um, well, I'm I'll not think- that strict on the rules. <laughs> it's just something, just, just to get them engaged to do something. Really. I know. I've, I've half a mind to, to, to get back on the phone with um, with David Roper and get my name changed by deed poll to, to <laughs> Ty, T-Y or yeah. something. <laughs> yeah. Just to get a head start on today's. And so, 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 so you're providing this every day. How do how do people join the the, the Scava? So um, you can either on Instagram or Facebook. They're the two main kind of platforms that I use. Although I am on LinkedIn as well. But uh, for this, it's mostly on Facebook or Instagram. So if you're doing it on Facebook, you can either put it, put your photo of your name, um, right as a comment under my daily post on my okay. Facebook page, Marla White Photography. Um, or you can do it on your own and just use um, the hashtag MW Hunt, and then it should go to under the hashtag. And if you're posting it on Instagram, you can either tag me, again, Marla White Photography, or again, use the hashtag MW Hunt. And oh. then at the, at the end, um, however many times you've, days you've participated, I'll put everybody's names into a hat, basically and draw for the for the prizes at the end oh fantastic i love that idea it's such a great idea it just keeps you know keep gives people a little break from from doing what they're doing and I exactly think, i think maybe oh, mom yeah. can have a quick coffee while the kids are running around looking for their letters or whatever exactly, <laughs> exactly yeah and, and actually going back to the how many names you know yeah if, if you want a longer break just tell them look uh, you've got three names so go find exactly <laughs> well i think I feel sorry for the kids that actually may have even more than one middle name. They're exactly, very- yeah. And imagine if their parents have got hyphenated surnames, you know, having exactly. Bromley or whatever, yeah. <laughs> Might take them a while. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, go put your feet up, have your own coffee, make dinner. You know, it'd be brilliant. Oh, lovely. Um, so, so, Marla, also, while, while you're on, I want to ask you about um, photography. Could, do, you, do you have any... Um, speciality in your photography and 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 also obviously you know preparing for when this craziness you know does does subside and we're all back to some form of come on the new normality whatever it will be um i'm, I'm guessing because like you know, a lot of people will will have been wanting 
um, photography. I'm just thinking that there's going to be a glut of weddings. I'm I'm guessing as soon as you're allowed to to, to get married and christenings and and the like. Is there anything? Sorry, anything that you specialize in that you want to say that you'll be ready for uh, when we're back to some form of reality? Yeah. Well, um, I I don't do a lot of weddings. Um, mostly because they are weekends usually. And um, as I say with my own three children being very sporty, my weekends are usually <laughs> taken up with various uh, football and rugby games all over the country. So no. um, I, I don't do many. I'll, I'll do the odd wedding if it's somebody that I know sort of thing. Yeah. But um, I'll do, um, I do a lot of like just fa family photos. I can either do them in studio or outside and, you know, if there's a favorite park that the, the kids like to go to or something like that. Yeah. Um, and pets as well. I love to photograph pets. Oh, really? That must, that yeah, must... I encourage people to bring their dogs or whatever. You know, if it's an outdoor shoot, we can we can bring the dog as well. Absolutely. Oh, how do you, how do you get your, how do you get, how do you get the dogs to, to, to I don't know, not perform, to pose? <laughs> uh. Well, most dogs, luckily, are quite uh, food oriented. Um, yeah. So um, a lot of treats. They eat a lot of treats. <laughs> and uh, actually, some of the action shots are good, too. So they don't necessarily have to sit still and pose. Uh, it's quite good to get them running and jumping and leaping and stuff as well, because those are often the best oh, photos, that's, too. Yeah, that's pretty clever stuff, I have to say. Yeah, because it's, it, it's yeah. two different um, kind of disciplines. I, I only know a little bit about photography. I've got a two funny um, I've got two nephews on on both sides of the family, both called Oliver, and both um, <laughs> both both um, are photographers, which is quite um, oh, which is quite that's fun. Nice to have in the family. <laughs> it, it, is. <laughs> it, it, it is. It is. I really should. Uh, I really should use them. That's <laughs> you should definitely <laughs> instead of my dodgy selfies. Um, yeah. Look, well, I also I'm, think it's very important to get mum in the photo because lots of times. It's the moms that end up taking the photos of the kids, and then she's never in the photos. So that's the other thing that oh, I think is really that's, actually, that's make sure very, make sure mom gets in some of those photos. That's a very good point. Although sometimes mom wants to do her hair and put her makeup on, and you just have to convince her she's <laughs> beautiful already. She doesn't need to lose ten pounds. She doesn't need to do whatever. She's she's perfect the way she is. Exactly. And I, actually, I always say that to my wife when she says, oh, I haven't got any makeup. I say, yes. darling, you are naturally <laughs> beautiful. You don't need makeup. So you're, you're fine. Yes. But then every every well, photo has to get the uh, OK uh, tick. Because, yes. Yeah. Well, that's fair enough. Yeah. Is, which is fair. Enough. Um, uh, Sally uh, Sally is still watching. Having been on, she says, it's all about the coffee, Marla. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Great idea. She loves it. I am a coffee um, addict. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and Jen, absolutely. Mum needs to be photographed. That's amazing. Yes. Oh, and also, yes. Jen is saying, we had great fun with smoke bombs. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Pray, <laughs> yeah. When, when Jim, <laughs> last year when uh, Jim was pregnant, um, and uh, she knew she was having a boy. So we got some blue smoke bombs and took some photos of her outside with these smoke bombs. It was a great. Oh, one. how <laughs> cool. How cool. Oh, and we've got yeah. another one, Marla. Oh, to, actually, this is. So if you ever get a little sister, I, I, I'm blessed with mine, I have to say, because she's full of great ideas. Um, Alex, you says, just watching Marla in your live stream. I'm sure a lot of people would love to update family photos after this is over. And, yeah. uh, and the pet photos as well. Yeah, because I guess it's it's true, isn't it? Suddenly, you know, you, you, you want to, I know everyone feels that they need to be a little bit closer, I'm guessing. Well, so. I hope, you know, that's if something positive is going to come out of this, that um, people, you know, do realise that, um, you know, family is important. Either that or everyone's going to get divorced, one or the other. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's a, oh, more, that's a, get more work for David and Sally. Crikey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. I'll we'll just, we'll just give them a big, <laughs> a big shout out today. Oh, brilliant! <laughs> oh, well, look, Marla, what can I say? Thank you so much for coming on. And you see, look, thank you for having me. You were a great guest. So, thank you. It's, it's been fun. I uh, managed to hide from everybody, so it worked out okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh no, no, absolutely fantastic. No, a brilliant guest. And uh, look, we'll, we'll, I'll put the links up afterwards. We'll, we'll, we'll link in the comments to, you. to yourself to your Facebook page. So people can uh, can try that, and with the hashtag um, hashtag MW Hunt. Yes. Uh, which will do. In fact, actually, while I'm on the, look, I can see. This is why I love using this um, 
the live software. You see, we can just type, type in. It's better probably when, um, what's it, W, da, M, W. So there you go, hashtag MW Hunt on the screen. Yeah, no, it's easier if you're actually doing it for someone else while they're <laughs> while they're talking, <laughs> talking and typing. Never been my speciality, but I could never do that either. No, God loves a trier. Well, that's what I say anyway. <laughs> and oh, and Melissa, look, Jem, Jem, thank you so much for this. such a, so interactive. Um, Jem, can't wait for more of the scavenger hunt. So I'm guessing you have to wait till tomorrow. Yes, yeah. next one will be tomorrow. Yeah, cool. And, is, and is there is there a certain time, Marla, that you that you? Oh know? well, I mean, I'll be doing it every day this week. So for seven days. So I guess basically by the end of the seventh day, um, it would be ideal to have everybody do everything. I mean, if you miss day one, you can always do one and two on day two or whatever. Yeah. All right. As long as it's done by the end of the seventh day. Yeah. Oh. I'll, I'll do yeah. the draw. Um. On like, I guess next. Monday it will be, yeah. Oh, fantastic! Yeah, so that a bit, yeah. So it's almost like a rap party, so we can all, yeah, all jump on. <laughs> hey, if you want to, just putting it out there. If you wanted to do the draw on the show, that um, oh sure, I would, I would yeah, love we that. Could do that. But don't feel, don't feel any pressure. But no, absolutely, why not? No, that's a we great can, idea. We yeah, can do we that. can promote it. That'd be, <laughs> that'd be so cool. Sounds, sounds great. Yeah. Oh, brilliant. Marla, thank you so much. Um, listen, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to let you go because I, I, I'm only on an hour, so. So, well, thank you very much. God bless you. Thank you so much. And uh, yeah, everybody, I'll put the links in the, in the bottom and uh, away you go. Oh, how fantastic. What are you, again, how, how blessed am I to have, uh, to have two amazing guests on the one show? And this, and this, guys, is, and thank you, obviously, everyone for watching as well. But that's it, guys. You know, this is why we, this is why we, well, it is we, we're all in it together. But this is why I came up with the idea that we could all come, join, share, support each other. And uh, yeah, that is it. I will, the new name, let us know, of course, Open for Business. If you like it, tell me. If you don't like it, come up with a, another suggestion. I'm sure you will be able to do that um, quite easily. You'll come up with something much better, much more catchy, and, and I will be uh, forever grateful. And I probably will start an, a group for a, a group for open for business so we can all stay in contact even after the craziness has gone and we can all help each other and uh, that's what we want Jem Piggott thank you so much love to you um, and thank you for, for, for sharing it um, Alex ah oh, great name that's my sis cool anyway enough is enough I will see you all tomorrow 2 p.m. every day including Saturdays, just not on a Sunday because I do need a day off. Have a great day, everybody, and I will see you.